So we're here in Ginza, Tokyo, what feels like the scene of a crime, the destruction and demolition of the Nakagin Capsule Tower building. Finally, after many years of talking about it, they're doing it right now. It's a real shame, only one year ago uh, I came here during its 50th year anniversary, went inside, made a video and toured the place. At that time they knew it was going to be demolished, but it kind of felt like it was never going to happen. Uh, so to see it happening today, it's really hit home that this building is going to be lost forever in a matter of weeks. When I first moved to Japan in 2012 uh, and I came to Tokyo for the first time, top of my places to visit before Sensoji Temple or the Tokyo Tower or Shibuya was this building. I always wanted to come and see it. I had a morbid fascination with it, the design. Uh, I think it's because I naively assumed that all of Tokyo looked kind of like this, kind of quirky and original and unique. But the sad truth about Tokyo is many of the buildings are actually very dull and utilitarian and boring. All you have to do is take one look around and the buildings that surround the Nakagin Capsule Tower to see that, you know, these bland generic apartment blocks here or the shiny new skyscrapers here. There's nothing original about them. But when I first visited here in 2012, its 40th year anniversary, there was still quite a lot of people living and working within the tower's 140 capsules. And as recently as last year, there were still, I think, three or four people living within the building. While I can't say I would ever want to live inside it, I really do have a deep appreciation for this building. It is incredibly unique. Originally, when it was built in 1972, the idea was to build several of them and have your own personal capsule that you could take out, remove, almost like a Jenga block, and take it to another building. But they didn't do that, they only built one. Uh, and the real tragedy is, you know, this building fell into disrepair decades ago. This isn't a recent development. It doesn't take much looking at to realize that it probably does need to be demolished sooner or later. It's a real shame they weren't able to recover or revitalize it 10, 20 years ago. And there is a disturbing amount of asbestos within the building. Uh, I don't envy the people who are demolishing it right now. We're pretty ropey in there. Uh, something that I saw when I walked through it last year. There was a lot of mold. It wasn't very clean. It wasn't overly pleasant. When I released the documentary on this building about a year ago now, there were quite a lot of polarizing comments. A lot of people loved it, like myself, and a lot of people hated it and said it should be torn down. It was a disgrace. And I think regardless of whether you love or hate it, or regardless of whether you, you agree with the concept. And I don't overly agree with the concept of living in such a small space. I just love the appearance of it. Regardless of that, when it's gone in a few weeks, it's lost forever, that's it. We're not gonna see this ever again, probably, because it doesn't make a lot of sense, admittedly. Like I read an article that it's just part of the process of Tokyo's revitalization and sort of renewal. But it's not really, is it, when you're destroying an original building, it's just gonna be replaced with one of these bland, boring apartment blocks. If they were going to replace it with something new and original, then fine. But they're not. And I think that's the real tragedy of it. Once it's gone, it's gone. And that's it. And we've seen that a lot with Tokyo recently, such as the Harajuku station. The old building is gone, replaced with a utilitarian brand new station. I was in Akihabara the other day in the iconic Sega arcade next to the green bridge that runs across the street. That was gone. And I was really disorientated. I was like, wait a minute, where's the Sega logo? But that's gone too. I feel if this building was in the UK or Europe, we'd probably do a better job to preserve it. But the truth is in Japan, they don't have a good sort of reputation for preserving contemporary structures. They do a good job with sort of older historic buildings, but contemporary buildings don't stand a chance. And uh, I will come back after it's gone and we'll take a look and see what it is they actually put up here, but I'm not overly optimistic. I feel really lucky though to have seen it one last time. And the good news is they're trying to take at least one capsule out to preserve it and put it in the museum. So even though many of you guys watching this won't be able to see it with your own eyes, unfortunately, uh, hopefully you can at least go inside one of the capsules and see what it was like to live inside, to work inside the Nakagin Capsule Tower. Now you're probably wondering who my cameraman is, and it is my so-called best American friend, Pete. Well, let's worst hear, cameraman. Worst cameraman, let's hear his perspective. Let's get an American perspective. Oh. Well, there goes my dreams of moving into a bigger place. I mean, this sucks. Listen, you know, while Chris is gallivanting across Japan, going to Treasure Islands and being with his friends, it takes me to go see a condemned building. <laughs> but I'll be honest, this sucks because when I was growing up, at least, when I was playing video games, watching anime, these were the kind of buildings that had the kind of architecture or kind of, you know, crazy ideas that made me want to move here, made me want to visit. And now it's getting torn down with not even a thought of preserving it. You know, personally speaking, 
I think it sucks. This is one of a kind. You're not gonna find this in America, you're not gonna find this in the United Kingdom, and now you're not gonna find this in Japan. It's all becoming a little same. When you go to these different stations, it's not a lot of uniqueness anymore. What little uniqueness is left is slowly being rebuilt into mm. regular stuff. Mm. So, hope these small videos can uh, preserve some of that. And thanks for Chris for bringing me out here to depress me for yet another time. Thanks, mate. You're welcome. Oh my god, what an incredible view, what an incredible room. Pretty crazy, huh? It is as small as I imagined.